Hi, I'm Martin Allsbrook, and this is just a quick little video documenting my guillotine project, what it is, how it was made, and how it works. So I'm just going to start off with some footage of my roommate and I playing the guillotine. I intended for this game to be found in sort of a bar or pub setting, hence the two Coronas that we're having. And I think this game fits really well into that sort of setting as it tests the player's strength and timing abilities, two things that I could see intoxicated patrons having a lot of fun comparing. The game also becomes pretty aggressive, as you can see, and I think that helps the game appeal further to that audience as it can allow them to get some of their anger out in a safe manner. So now to talk a bit about how the game is actually played. It essentially has one rule and one objective. And to explain these, it helps a bit if I show you the scoreboard of the game and how that works. So here's the scoreboard. Each round starts with a five second countdown indicated by the red LEDs. And then a random amount of time passes before the green LEDs come on, indicating that the round has started. This format of starting the rounds was kind of inspired by F1 racing. And I really liked how they added that random amount of time before the final set of lights come on. I feel like it adds a lot of anticipation, which I really like, because I feel like it makes the game more intense. Because between the time that you expect the green lights to come on and the time that they actually do come on you're kind of just sitting there just like waiting on the edge of your seat ready to exert all this force so quickly and it just really adds a lot to the intensity of the game so tying this back into the rules and objective of the game the one rule i was talking about is basically that you're not allowed to put any tension in the rope before the green lights come on. If you do, the two sets of tinfoil at the bottom of the contraption will no longer be in contact with each other, sending a signal to the Arduino that one of the players pulled the rope early, giving the other player a point. The one objective of the game is to be the first person to pull the rope completely so that the tinfoil ball on the rope comes in contact with the conductive plate at the top of the contraption. Now, I just wanted to talk about the wiring for this project a bit. It required a lot of soldering time, a lot of prototyping on breadboards, but in the end it was pretty consistent and there's only a few things I would change if I did it again. So, you can see here the two conductive pieces I was talking about that detect when the player starts pulling and finishes pulling and they're both just activated by this positively charged ball on the end of the spring touching them. Okay, so now we're going to look at the back of the scoreboards. It's a lot of soldering on proto boards for this. Um, down here you can see we have these two lines that power the green LEDs in parallel and then up here, we have these five sets of two LEDs wired in parallel. And those are the five pairs of red LEDs on the front of the scoreboard. Here you can see what that looks like. Okay, and now moving on to the seven segment displays. These are common anode seven segment displays. So you can see that line of solder coming out. That's providing five volts to the display. And then each of those resistors goes to one pin on the Arduino. So we could just set that pin to low, and that would activate that segment of the display, but if we set it to high, current can't flow, and that segment stays off. Okay, and you can see on the back here, we've got these four sets of wires coming out of the back of the scoreboard. This um, gray and black one uh, carries the positive and negative voltage, and the gray wire controls the green LEDs. These two control the seven segment displays, and then this set of five controls the five red LEDs. They all come down through these little bundles and they slip through the cracks in the bottom. 
And then all those wires come into these splitters underneath the guillotine. You can see we have two sets of colorful wires coming out and one set of green wires going into the splitter. Those green wires connect to the Arduino. And it basically just lets me send half as many outputs out of the Arduino because most of what's being displayed on the scoreboards is mirrored between the two with the exception of the green LEDs which show which player won. And I'm not the uh, happiest with these splitters. As you can see, they're pretty messy, but I'll talk about that more later. Okay, and then just getting these two inputs into the Arduino. This top one is soldered to up here, but this bottom one, you can see we soldered to underneath the contraption. They both go into this little board, which just grounds them through some resistors to get rid of any noise. And then these two green wires at the top send the signals into the Arduino so that they can be read and the same is mirrored on the other side. I'm also using an Arduino Mega for this project because it has 53 pins and normal Arduino only has something like 13 digital pins and you can clearly see I'm using more than 13 pins for this project. Okay so that pretty much wraps it up in terms of the wiring on this project. There's a few more connections like the voltage, ground, and the signal for the green LEDs. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the changes I would have made looking back on this project. I'm not too happy with these splitters. It makes a huge mess. Essentially, the, uh, one of the biggest issues with this mess is that this bottom splitter is grounded or sending out ground signals, and this top splitter is sending out high voltage signals so if they accidentally come in contact like this underneath the contraption it'll short out those connections and a part of the seven segment display and one of the red LEDs won't turn on. So in hindsight if I were to redo this wiring underneath the contraption I would just make one big board that controls all these connections and organizes all the wires preventing any little shorts like this. Another change I would have made is just to put these scoreboards flush with the edge of the contraption. I was going to do this but I just didn't have time to 3D print the enclosures I needed. I would also like to replace these tinfoil balls with something a little more official looking. And this rope is starting to fray here as you can see that's because it grinds up against this metal plate. I'd either need to move the metal plate or the rope back in order to fix that. And then down here, the only reason I had to add a tinfoil ball to this metal rod was because it wasn't long enough. And unfortunately, Home Depot didn't have longer bolts for me to grab. So if I did have a little bit more time, I think I could find a uh, longer rod, maybe on Amazon, to replace that with. Finally, I'd just like to remove this gray wire and run the voltage up through the bottom of the thing through the spring similar to how I do with the rod but unfortunately I couldn't get good enough connections between all those pieces to make that consistent enough. So that's the guillotine. Thank you for watching and I'll just leave you with this final clip of me and my teacher playing it. <laughs> yeah,